I'd always been a traditional feeder in droughts and uh, you know when I was younger that was fine but it would end up a six or seven days a week feeding of bags of grain off the back of a truck and more recently a feed out trailer but it was time consuming and uh, my two sons had convinced me that a drought pot was a uh, was a uh, you know, the, really the way forward. And I could see that they weren't gonna to wanna to do it the way I did it, which is fair enough. And I could see as I got older that I was struggling to do it the way I'd always done it. So I thought, yep, let's give it a go. And it's still, we've only just started. So I've, we've still got a lot to learn about it, but I can see that it's gonna give us options here when times do get dry. And even when times aren't dry, gives us options. Now I can look after country, you know, maybe sell animals that are in good condition in a drought, where normally I would never have animals in this sort of country in good enough to condition to sell. So I think giving me options um, and alternatives is, is gonna be the big thing for me. I think as you get older, it gets harder. Every drought you go through, it sort of uh, chips away at your resilience. It's mentally hard and you, you sort of learn to block it out but it's still tough on you, especially when it goes for a long period of time. The situation here behind me to have it where we can have all the sheep in and have less time out in the paddock and be looking after our hill country, um, you know, that's, it, it, it's a no-brainer. You've got to go and seek out professional advice and the best advice. And it mightn't always be particularly suited to your operation, but there'll probably be bits of it that will, or maybe all of it will, but if you're going to spend this money at the startup, then get it right at the beginning. That would be my advice. Brett's been fantastic to work with. He's a, a wealth of knowledge, and it's always a, a pleasure working with the LLS and, and Brett Littler. We came up with a plan of seven pens, but it only started with four, but the capability to go to seven, and they're 50 metres by 25 metres with the plan to hold about 200 adult merino ewes and the budget was 25,000 and it's come out at $30,000. So $7,500 per pen. Um, so that's, that's, all, that's all pretty straightforward because we weren't too far over budget. And now it's just a matter of, of actually, you know, getting sheep in there when, when, we, when we find the trigger point to put sheep in there and then working out the, uh, the cost structures of, of the grain. We're not fully equipped yet from a, a, a grain capacity holding side of things, so we need probably another 50 tonne silo uh, so I can have paper beans in, 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 in one silo and then barley or a different type of grain in the other, in the other silo. And so that's, we've still got to get that right um, and then just uh, you know, start doing it when we need to and, and learn as we go. We built basically where a tree line was. We just widened it a little bit and cleared it out and, and did good preparation work for where the troughs, troughs were. Yeah, so we got some good advice from LLS and from Brett as to the critical things, which was the water, the location to the yards, um, you know, a bit of slope, not too close to a creek, all those sorts of things were issues that were made aware to us from LLS that we had to think about, which we then, you know, planned for accordingly. But it was easy for me because my son and his mate came up um, from Rochester and Victoria with a trailer and with a big New Zealand whacker packer in it for dry. I didn't think we'd get all the posts driven in this country, but 98% of them got down the, down the, um, the full metre and a bit. I've put young rams in there because um, we had a particularly tough winter this winter, one of the toughest winters I've been through um, in my time here since since the early 80s. And um, so we brought them in, they were quite wormy, the rams, we drenched them and put them in and have had them on faber beans and wheat and straw. And just to get the ones that I sell in a ram sale up to speed and the others I will shear and then sell, but they'll be in good nick to sell. So you know, will obviously get as, as much as they can in the, in the subject market at the moment. The only concern I had was that 
this dirt here has got no real rock underneath it. So I'm not sure how it's going to be when it gets wet. The other sites, which were further away from our yards, had great rock, but they were just too far in terms of water and laneways, etc., getting the sheep back to the yard. So that's still an unknown because we haven't had a wet time um, since it's been built. But um, I think it'll be just managing as I go, and then we'll, we'll sort issues out when we hit them.